Both the death sentencing rate and the death row population remain very small for women in comparison to that for men. Actual execution of female offenders is quite rare, with only 575 documented instances as of December 31, 2020, beginning with the first in 1632. These executions constitute about 3.6% of the total of 16,018 confirmed executions in the United States between 1608 and 2020. It's believed that women make up less than 5% of the world's total death row population, with approximately 800 women currently on death row, worldwide. In 2020, at least seven countries sentenced women to death, and at least 16 women were executed. However, the exact data is difficult to ascertain as countries such as North Korea, China and Vietnam, continue to keep their death penalty data a state secret. The current death penalty era is deemed to have begun when new death penalty statutes were passed pursuant to the U.S. Supreme Court's decision in Furman v. Georgia, which in effect struck down all death penalty statutes that existed at that time. Sentencing under the new statutes began in 1973 and continues through today. A total of 84 death sentences have been imposed on females during this period, only 1.8% of the 4,581 death sentences imposed in this time period. The death sentencing rate for female offenders has typically been approximately 5 per year beginning in the 1980s. However, in 1989 this annual death sentencing rate doubled for reasons unknown. As of 1990, the death sentencing rate for females apparently has returned to 6 or 7 per year. Of the 84 females sentenced to death, only 34 remain in effect. One resulted in an execution in 1984 of Velma Barfield and the other 49 were reversed or commuted to life imprisonment. Since 1976, when the Supreme Court of the United States lifted the moratorium on capital punishment in Gregg v. Georgia, 17 women have been executed in the United States. Women represent less than 1.1% of the 1,547 executions performed in the United States since. The number of death row inmates fluctuates daily with new convictions, appellate decisions overturning conviction or sentence alone, commutations, or deaths. The time on death row counter starts on the day they were first placed on death row. It does not count time incarcerated prior to sentencing, nor does it discount time spent in prison off death row in cases where death sentences were overturned before being reinstated. In general, both the death sentencing rate and the death row population remain very small for women in comparison to that for men. Actual execution of female offenders is quite rare with only 575 documented instances as of December 31, 2020, beginning with the first in 1632. These executions constitute about 3.6% of the total of 16,018 confirmed executions in the United States between 1608 and 2020. Gender bias continues to exist in the application of the death penalty, and that this bias has roots in the historic notion of chivalry. In a review of 1,300 murder cases in California between 2003 and 2005, the influence of gender-based values was particularly pronounced in certain crimes, gang murders, rape murders, and domestic violence murders. 
the death penalty is imposed on women relatively infrequently and that it is disproportionately imposed for the killing of women. Thus, the death penalty in California appears to be applied in accordance with stereotypes about women's innate abilities, their roles in society, and their capacity for violence. Far from being gender neutral, the California death penalty seems to allow prejudices and stereotypes about violence and gender, chivalric values, to determine who lives and who dies. Because women are stereotyped as weak, passive, and in need of male protection, prosecutors and juries seem reluctant to impose the death penalty upon them. On the other hand, in cases where the victim was a woman, the death sentence rate was 10.9%, seven times the rate when men were victims. Female victims are more likely to result in death sentences. The little number of female murderers sentenced to death has resulted in the belief that chivalrous attitudes spare females from capital punishment. Nonetheless, the proportion of death row inmates who are female matches the infrequency with which females commit crimes for which society authorizes capital punishment. Preliminary analysis suggests that female death row inmates are more likely than male death row inmates to have killed spouses or other intimates, although this disparity has not yet been explained. Nevertheless, a content analysis of state laws regarding capital punishment reveals a form of gender bias that is harmful to the interests of women in that domestic homicide is viewed as less serious than other forms of homicide. The presence of sexual victimization, the method of killing, the relationship between the victim and the defendant, and whether or not the victim had family responsibilities all predicted the likelihood of a death sentence and helped to explain why cases with female victims are more likely to be punished with a death sentence. Capital punishment is a legal penalty in Texas for murder, and participation in a felony resulting in death if committed by an individual who has attained or is over the age of 18. The first execution in Texas occurred in 1819, with the execution of a white male, George Brown, for piracy. In 1840, a free black male, Henry Forbes, was executed for jailbreaking. Prior to Texas statehood in 1846, eight executions all by hanging were carried out. In 1928, the state of Texas began housing death row inmates in the Huntsville unit. In 1965, the male death row inmates moved to the Ellis unit. In 1999, the male death row moved to Polinsky. In the 1923 to 1973 period, Texas state authorities had three female death row inmates. The first. Emma Strait 8 Oliver was held at Huntsville unit after her 1949 sentencing, but had her sentence commuted to life imprisonment in 1951. Mary Anderson, sentenced to death in 1978, was held at Gorey unit. Her death sentence was reversed in 1982, and the sentence was changed to life. Texas which is the second most populous state of the Union, has executed 576 offenders since the U.S. capital punishment resumption in 1976 to October 5, 2020 to more than a third of the national total. Texas has executed nine women in its history, the most recent being Lisa Ann Coleman on September 17, 2014. The first woman legally executed in Texas was Jane Elkins. Jane killed the man she had been hired out to look after. His name was Andrew Wisdom. Jane killed Mr. Wisdom with an axe blow to his head, after he raped her. 
Jane Elkins, a black enslaved woman and mother was taken into custody and charged with murder. At that time, the population of Dallas was around 1,500. Another 500 or so lived nearby on the socialist Lowry Union communal lands. According to the police, Mr. Wisdom lay down to sleep and never woke up. Jane split his head with an axe. Jane was an African-American woman born around 1800. The first legal record of Jane was when she was sold by Edward Wellburn to John Young. On Tuesday, May 17, 1853 Jane was sentenced by Judge Reagan to death by hanging. Jane was convicted of murder the verdict of jury being found guilty of murder in the first degree was brought into open court for the purpose of receiving the judgment thereof. And it being demanded of Jane if she had anything to say why judgment and sentence of death should not then be passed upon her, and Jane saying nothing thereto. It is therefore ordered a judge and decreed by the court that the sheriff of Dallas County, keep Jane Elkins in close confinement in the common jail of Dallas County, until Friday the 17th of May 1853, to Friday the 27th, between the hours of 11 o'clock am and 3 o'clock p.m. the sheriff of Dallas County takes Jane from the common jail of the county and carry her to a gallows erected for that purpose, and that between the hours of 11 o'clock am and 3 p.m. he hang Jane Elkins by the neck until she is dead, and that a certified copy of this judgment be delivered to the sheriff. Jane Elkins was hung outside the Dallas courthouse on May 27, 1853. On the day Elkins was executed, Several hundred people traveled to Dallas to see her die. The public spectacle of hangings was common at the time. After her hanging, Jane's body was placed in a shallow grave near the courthouse where the execution took place, and that members of a medical fraternity resurrected her. Jane's corpse became a medical cadaver and was likely used for research. This was a common practice in early Dallas. It is not known if America Elkins, Jane's owner at the time of her execution received payment for Jane's body or if it was simply taken from the grave. Historically, Jane has become identified as Jane Elkins, giving her the last name of her final owner. Thank you for watching Death Row.